I think not since the start of this report 11 years ago have we seen two more opposite ends of the spectrum. There's huge amounts of capital going around the world which in turn is directing itself towards property which has long been seen as a safe haven for these investors. More millionaires moved to Sydney last year than any other city in the world. So this, as Richard said, is our 11th edition of the Wealth Report. If I can just put it into context, it reflects $1 trillion of private client investment, $1 trillion of private client investment into real estate around the world. 2017 will be the greatest year of political risk since the Second World War. So a huge amount of uncertainty, which is going to drive uh, the investment behaviours, I think, of the world's rich. And then if we focus in on China and just millionaires, over 100,000 are being created every year. China really battling now as to how to control this surge in wealth. Do they keep it within the country and have surging asset prices, or do they release it out of the country and have wealth flight? But look at Australia, reasons to be cheerful. Still great growth generation. Sydney and Melbourne uh, at the top of the league in terms of where the money is coming in. So government control, I see in the next few years as being the bigger gender item. The greatest luxury of all will be that of privacy and discretion because governments are increasingly looking to understand where people hold their wealth and what assets they have. The key is there's a lot of money offshore which we think is now going to be compelled to come back onshore. And the sense that we're building up is that this is going to go into commercial real estate as much as it is into residential real estate as people rebalance their investment portfolios. So to summarise, I think when you look at the global situation and the key drivers of wealth and investment, I personally believe that Australia is incredibly well positioned, uh, not just for the next year, but certainly well into the next five and ten years. Thank you very much indeed. So we're now delighted to host a panel discussion. Uh, the topic for today is super prime property. What is it in terms of lessons that we can learn, whether things worked well or things that didn't work well overseas? They're spending less time everywhere, so when they do spend some time somewhere, they want that time to be beautiful and special and enjoyable. So putting that layer of, of hospitality, I think, kind of into everything that you would offer. There's a trend we're definitely seeing global is, is removing friction from the ownership process, removing friction from my life. Our phone does it. Why can't my residents do it for me as well? We wanted to come up with a residential profile that suited our hospitality profile. How important is Chinese money going to be to securing, let's say, the early wind for super in Australia? Look, I think that Chinese money is important, but I don't think it's the only money that we, we will be seeing coming into these projects. Yes, they're the buyers, uh, but we've also got a lot of Chinese developers that are in, involved in these projects. And I guess they're, they're also willing to take a risk where I guess in the local market we haven't um, necessarily gone forward with that. The reality is foreign direct investment is going to be a growth driver in Australia. You need that foreign money. That foreign money actually will tackle more complicated and complex projects that the domestic market hasn't had to do in the past. The qualitative component of it can't be underlooked. You know, it's almost like a ripple effect. We're building these palaces that have quite a big public realm in them now, and I, I don't think there's a, a development kind of on the drawing board now that doesn't consider itself mixed use to some degree. The, the idea that these buildings, you know, are just some fortress yeah, yeah. with a guy at the door saying, keep out, you know, you're not welcome, uh, that's just not the way it works. All of the permits these days, to get anything like this across the line, there is a give back component. I think some of the towers that are being built uh, around the world at the moment are incredibly exciting. And I think for the people who occupy them, uh, it's uplifting. I think for people who live around them and look at them, it's uplifting and it creates an identity. It's interesting, from my meetings around uh, the region, there's no doubt that more and more people are looking to come to Australia and invest in Australia.